At this point, the game gets more interesting. Let's suppose you've somehow managed to bluff your way into a position of actual authority, meaning you just don't route decisions, you make them. You have hired people and fired them. Lately you've been firing quite a few and letting even more go. You are, in a sense, upper level management, in some sense, upper level management, a supervisor, a leader, a director. There is a feeling within the company that you are in charge of something. People work for you. You're an officer in the battle of the bottom line. Which is great. It's not going to save you. You're going to lose your job too, but it's great because it leaves you with a few options other than duck, cover, and hold. If you are in this category, on your way out, be sure to ask for a package. When they tell you, sorry, it's unavoidable, it's not your fault, but you have to go, you tell them, that's okay, you're not going to take it personally, and oh, by the way, you want a package. A package is a gift, of sorts, wrapped in plain brown paper. It's also a process, a game. It is a complicated, delicate procedure of corporate removal, as formal as a ballroom dance, which, roughly translated, works like this. I'm not the total fool you think I am. I'm not completely helpless, either. I can see the end is coming. I know I'm gone. In my opinion, we're all gone. So before the end comes, I want out, and I'm willing to go smoothly. I won't badmouth the company. I won't poach customers. I'll never tell where the bodies are buried. I won't snitch on any high-level hanky-panky, and I'll never re breathe a word about quid pro quo kickbacks. In return for this generous cooperation, I want N months full pay over and above my vacation and sick leave. I want my stock options vested. I'll want to use the company's facilities, including offices, phones, a secretary, and stationery, until such time as I secure another position. I'll want letters of recommendation that eagerly vouch for my ability, loyalty, and perseverance. And finally, I'll want one last evening with Kay, your secretary. At this level of intrigue, gamesmanship is the key factor. Naturally, you must have the goods in order to play. It's a game of leverage. You better know where at least one good body is buried, or they better believe you do. They should be panicky about your ability to sweet-talk clients out of the fold. Otherwise, you won't even feel the door hit your butt on the way out. Your chances of a night with Kay are slim, but it felt good to ask. Remember, knowledge is power, and power is money. And power is how strong they think you are. The game also calls for patience, which means it's best to abstain from the use of alcohol. Feelings may run strong, tempers may boil, and a few glasses of wine or a shot of scotch might be just enough to encourage you to cold cock that moron who's been pushing you around all these years. Taking a drunken or booze-assisted swing at an obnoxious stuffed shirt vice president might, be, might give you an enormous jolt of temporary satisfaction, but it could hurt you in the long run. You'll lose all your lovely possible perks and run the risk of a lawsuit for personal injury. Try to remember that they paid him to be a jerk. That was his job, even if he was well suited for it, and stay away from the alcohol. Because the guy may also be a karate instructor, for all you know. He may block your clumsy haymaker and knock you into the middle of next week. Then your pride, your jaw, and your bank account will all be hurting. So the best advice is to play it cool. Keep a poker face and your cards tight to your vest. Maybe you're bluffing, maybe not. If you've got them guessing, you're in. They can't afford to take the chance. They'll pay you off. And if you are holding a strong hand, you might even come away feeling like a winner, even if you don't get that night with Kay. Which brings us to the final scenario. If you're the president of the whole shebang, this big company, you can just deal yourself a royal flush face up on the table. This is known as the golden parachute. It works like this. The little guys jump out windows and they don't come back. Some try to hold on, but they're let go. The middle guys are like yo-yos. They jump out, but they're attached to those bungee cords. They fall a long way, but they bounce back up short of destruction, get the thrill of a lifetime, feel they're better for it, 
for having looked ruin and death in the face like that, and eventually somebody hauls them back up and they start managing again. But for the guys at the top, they're so high up, they're in a plane, the corporate jet. And sure, it's an extravagance, a symbol of the excess that led to all of this, and now it's going to crash, killing all aboard, but the guys on top are handed these parachutes. The trip down for them will be almost better than the flight itself. A bittersweet, dreamlike floating passage that will give them plenty of time to write their maudlin memoirs or polish up the old golf game. They're going to lose their wings, yes, they're getting clipped, yes, they're losing that exulting feeling of piloting the craft, and yes, they're on their way down rather ignominiously, maybe even with a push, but lordy lordy what a bed of feathers to land on. This is what they mean when they say that parting is such sweet sorrow. The higher up you are, the more golden is the aura around you. Some outgoing execs will be able to demand such outrageous fees for their going that it gives them the satisfaction of seeing a grimace of pain on the faces of their presumed conquerors. And when they land, it's on their feet, ready to begin again, with a dream and a tidy stake. They'll haul up a few of those fellows dangling on the bungee cords, and if things take off, they might even raid the evening support groups for a few people who know how to work and aren't ashamed to do it for money. If we're all really lucky, someone will start a war. And that's the way we pull ourselves out of this recession. 